What's up, Colliders? Welcome back to another episode here of Worlds Collide. I am the kid JW. That's Miss Diva Talks. What's up, y'all? And this video is from Bladed Angel. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that or forgot the name of it. But that is what it is. Oh, okay. Um, Ten signs you are a bad driver. First off, you know what? Just run it because I'm pretty sure I'm going to lift it. I just came back from a trip going coast to coast to coast over 5,000 miles, basically. And it reminded me about how many bad drivers are still in the United States. So here's a video about 10 signs you're a bad driver. The first sign that you're a terrible driver is blind spot hugging. This is a very terrible habit that you want to get out of. There's two reasons people do this. The first one is just absent-mindedness, where they're just matching someone's speed. Usually people who are texting and driving will do this. The second, more childish reason that people do this, it's a lot more prominent. It's that people don't want to show weakness by signaling. I actually read this on a forum when I googled why do people blind spot hug. I kid you not, it's because there's non-car people who are so petty where they're like, oh, I don't want to signal, I don't want to show weakness to people, so if I hug their blind spot up and just shove myself into their lane, it forces them to yield to me, ooh, because it feeds their fragile ego to do something like that. That's just the most childish thing. Like so Exactly. That is super fucking petty. Because why would you do that? Why would you do that? Especially for somebody like me who has them blind spot sensors. I know you see that light on in my mirror. And I know that you know that you're the reason that that light is on. Please move. But could it also be your fault for not being driving fast to get out, the, out of the blind spot? Because I have somebody in front of me. I just want to, I just want to say something because you sounded really true. That's about. doing the same shit. <laughs> and I'm trying to get around all you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that that... That bothers me. Like, I don't have the lights in my But I can still sense, because when you're driving, even if you don't have the, the blinky lights in your mirror, you can still sense when someone's in your blind spot. And I hate that, too. Some non-car people really are on that extra, extra okay. wild the second sign that you're a terrible driver is speeding up to block zipper merging. So zipper merging, let me explain it briefly. It's basically when you basically merge like how a zipper yeah. behaves, like, you know, a zipper on your clothes. If you're currently in the exit... People in Michigan don't know how to do this. I blame they you. do not know how to do this Stop because if they knew how to do this, congest traffic congestion when this shit is starting wouldn't even be a thing. I call BS on it because if y'all can merge perfectly fine at McDonald's and Chick-fil-A, y'all can do zipper merge. Y'all just don't want to because there's no food involved. Second, third off, y'all done got your driver's license from the east side driving school. Wow. Lane, if someone wants to join your exit lane, you let them carry their speed and either shove themselves behind or in front of you, and the guy in front of you and behind you need to leave enough space to understand that. Now, if you're the one going to exit, then you need to carry enough speed to shove yourself in between the exit lanes. The problem is a lot of people don't understand this at all, or rather they do, but they misinterpret it out of territorial nature. For example, they'll see it as you trying to steal their spot or steal their lane. Here's the problem when you start start blocking someone from entering the exit lane. Eventually, they will come to a complete stop because if everyone keeps choking them out and they can't carry their speed, now you have a completely stopped car on the highway. Guess what that does? That makes the other traffic behind him completely stop. Guess what that does to the people on the exit lane? Eventually, a good Samaritan is going to let him in. Now, the problem is, in order for the good Samaritan to let him in, he also needs to hold his lane to a complete stop. So now you've effectively brought two lanes to complete stop just because of your childish territorial nature. When entering a highway, people do not have a problem with this. Notice how when people are coming from an exit lane, or coming from an on-ramp rather, they are able to zipper merge, and people will actually yield to them or even move leftwards to them to make space. Right. Why doesn't this logic apply to exiting if it applies to on-ramping? No other country struggles this much. The third sign that you're a terrible driver is when you mistake people for tailgating you. Let me explain to you what I mean. So, I've always had people who will litter, like pour their coffee or pour their water, or even just throw their cup out the window and the worst one that I get is people will constantly spray windshield wiper fluid for a moment I was like they're just cleaning their bugs but one day I eventually went on a forum around 2018 and googled why people do this I was like someone doesn't need to clean their windows every five minutes that's really unreasonable eventually I learned that that's a passive aggressive way of them saying that you're too close to them so you're probably thinking oh Bladen now that you learn that people do this because they think people are tailgating them doesn't that mean you're too close to them wrong dear SUV and truck drivers did you know your window look at this window right here it's tall did you know sports cars are roofs 
are short. Therefore, it looks like we're closer to you are than we actually are. This is a very important thing I want to tell SUV drivers because this is something that a lot of them fail to understand. Doug DeMuro did a whole video about this, but that was way in 2014, I think. He was in a Ferrari 360 and he was behind an SUV by like one or two car lengths and his car completely disappeared from their rear view mirror. Because of how physics works, because of how light works, because of how refraction works and how your freaking mirror works, this is basic elementary stuff that SUV drivers should have learned but probably don't know because again, welcome to American drivers. If a shorter vehicle is behind a taller vehicle, we will look like we're closer than you. For example, if you see my hood, yeah, you're probably good. thinking I'm eating your bumper because you're like, wow, I don't see his bumper. If you see my hood... Yeah, but he a good... Yeah. Four, five cars in his back. And this makes sense. Now I'm coming like, because I was behind somebody once and it was like, you know, wiper plus. I, like, oh. I just got my they car. They can't see you. Like, I just got my car washed. Now you going to mess up my window? Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm mad. Now I got to do my wiper fluid because you got yours. I'm not, I don't want your wiper fluid on my wi windshield because my windshield, it's mine. I don't want your fluids on mine. Well, the territorial nature that he just said <laughs> right. that we So I'm going to turn my wiper fluid on and it's going to go to the person behind us there because they don't, yeah. Hood and roof, I'm actually like five cars yep. away yep. from you. By the time you actually do see my front bumper, so you see my front bumper, my hood, and my roof, I'm like six to seven cars away from you. But again, some people still think that I'm on their butt. Like, wow, that sports car is like two cars away from me. No, I'm like way, way back there. It's just something you have to get used to. Another sign that you're a terrible driver is wannabe street racer. First off, not everyone in a sports car or performance car will want to race you. And even if they did, you have to do it fairly. Otherwise, you didn't win crap. So people who constantly rev at others during traffic, especially at someone who's trapped in traffic in their lane while they're while the person revving and trying to initiate the race is in an open lane, how do you not understand that the person who is in the trap traffic lane literally cannot do anything? They can what do you want them to do? Rear end the guy in front of them? Like they're obviously not gonna be able to race you, but I still see TikTokers post really stupid videos of them gapping sports cars even though they weren't even trying. Did you know that in order for your race to start, there has to be multiple competitors. You have to understand that if the other person's literally trapped in traffic, you are not gapping crap. They're not in any both. sort of shape or form trying to race you. They might even just be going home because sometimes the reason they're in a slower lane filled with traffic is because that's their exit lane. Another sign that you're a terrible driver is if you hold the brake at green lights. This usually happens if someone is distracted, whether it's texting and driving, whether they're high as a kite, or whether they're just arguing with someone on the phone. Now the problem with this is it causes a chain reaction effect, because if the person is not going on the green, everyone else behind them is also not going to go. By the time the distracted driver does finally go, it causes this traffic shockwave. Basically, they're going to let go of the brake and then go. Then the guy behind them will do the same thing, the person behind them will do the same thing, and basically it's a slow moving chain almost like you're taking turns to go at a red light. Atlanta is one of the few cities I've lived in where people will do this almost at every single stoplight and it's a really difficult thing to fix on your own because you as one person in the entire traffic flow of a city when everyone in the city has already been ingrained to do this ever basically there's nothing you can do is what I'm trying to say this is not something that can be fixed on a single level it has to be fixed on a culture wide on a city level. I notice in Atlanta even when people aren't texting and driving Nah, because I feel like here we do that. Well, we have to here because traffic lights for some reason only exist when they're green. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when they're red, they don't. They're yellow. It goes. Our traffic lights literally are green. Yep. Red. Yep. Asterisk mark on the red. Yep. Yes, there's three colors, but for some reason, no one knows. What, no one knows what yellow does. To me, <laughs> yellow means speed up. Yeah, right. Yellow means yellow speed means up. I'm still going. Right. If you stop yellow means the, I'm still going to fuck through. Exactly. Now, if you stop on a yellow light, I'm gonna be very pissed. Yeah. Because I feel that literally happened to me around the corner. Light turns yellow, he stops. I was pissed. <laughs> I had nothing to throw, so I threw my nap, my stack of napkins to dazzle and did this. So I was pissed. <laughs> but yes. Driving, they still do this out of distrust and out of fear of one another because that's how little faith they have in other drivers. So they will literally at the front when the light turns green, only the people in the front let go of the brakes and go. Then the person behind them does the same thing and so on and so forth until it quite literally is your turn to let go of your brake and move too, which is extremely inefficient. 
every other city I've lived in, even other metro areas like Dallas, Texas, or even when I visited my brother in Phoenix, Arizona, I got honked at for doing this and I deserved it because I had developed this habit too, living in Atlanta for so long. I forgot what it was like to be in normal traffic flow. So when I was in Phoenix, when the light turned green, everyone let go of their brake. Even like if there are 10 cars back, all the nine cars in front of them let go of their brake and then the 10th car is also responsible for doing the same thing. They have that much faith in one another so they all collectively roll forward as a pack. But I was so used to the turn taking system that I didn't realize that when the light literally turns green, everyone moves together. So I got honked at because I stood still for a couple of seconds. And when I lived in other places in my life, I had never done this before. Like in Indiana, people do this properly. They all coast forward together. In Texas, they coast forward together. Like people in Texas are, they're not really bad drivers. They're just aggressive drivers, but they're still smart drivers. Atlanta is one of the first cities I've lived in where people are aggressively bad drivers. They're really dumb and they're also way too cocky. The sick Damn. That's probably because half Atlanta, half Atlanta came from here. Well. <laughs> Sign that you're a terrible driver is not trading lanes. So, what does trading lanes mean? If someone wants to get into your lane and you want to get into theirs, you initiate something known as a trade maneuver. So, the one on the right is responsible for slowing down and can even hold up get traffic a little bit to make a small gap for you to jump in. And when you jump in, you have to do it with a decent amount of speed coming right. in from the left because obviously you speed up to merge into a lane. So, you speed up a bit and then kind of dip in. And the guy who wants to get in your lane is going to quickly jump out as you do it. So, it's almost like a cross over maneuver. I know it sounds scary at first, like, wow, you're supposed to speed up and just dive into their lane. What if you hit them? You're not going to hit them because you have to remember, here's the number one logic why trading always works. You're not in danger of hitting the guy you're trading with because they will never speed up to choke you out. They are offering their lane to you because they want to get into your lane. So if you see someone signaling trying to get out of the lane that you want to get into and they you start to see them even hold up traffic to build up a gap in front of them for you to jump in, you need to jump into it. That that way they can jump out of it. Literally. Nothing is more satisfying than the perfect highway lane trade, <laughs> especially when you're like trading. If you missed an exit and you're like, I got to take this exit. And someone else is like, I'm in the wrong exit. I've got to get out of this exit. And you two like have your brain waves just <laughs> sink and you know exactly what the other wants and you give each other each other's lane. That is the most satisfying thing in driving ever. And you got to learn how to do yeah. this. It just comes naturally to some people where if you're not a territorial douchebag, you will naturally understand how to do this motion. Like, the seventh sign that you're a terrible driver is when you're too nice. Note to people who are way too nice. Stop trying to wave people onto a multi-lane road. Your singular car cannot block multiple lanes. Therefore, even if you halt your lane to let someone into it, the other guy that's in the lane next to you, if they don't do the same thing, it's not safe. The best thing in that situation is to just let things play out and just go about your business. It's really detrimental if you try to patronize them because now now you're causing the cars behind you to just come to a complete stop. But as they're doing it, someone behind them, they got somewhere to be, man. So when you stop them to complete stop, they're just going to move to the lane next to you. So the guy behind him is going to go to the lane next to him and just gun their throttle. Most of the times it's a VQ owner. And just make loud trumpet noises as they run down that lane. So had I accepted this person's nice gesture, I would have gotten T-boned. So again, do not try to wave people on multi-lane roads. That is not nice at all. You are being a giant inconvenience to those behind you. You're also not offering a safe alternative for the guy trying to merge. So you're not accomplishing anything on either front. I've used this word a lot in this video, but I'm also going to make it its own entry, and that is territorial driving. Territorial driving has a lot, a lot of subsets of what it can cause. It basically stems from the idea that people interpret every little action on the road as a spiteful gesture towards them. Sometimes people accidentally become one because they just had a bad day at work, but for this one, it's hard to correct people doing it because this is something that doesn't stem from driving. It stems from a sad personal behavior, like their ego is so fragile, something in their life has caused them to be so insecure that they now have to throw it out other strangers on the road. Like it's not an action like tailgating is or an action like holding the brake at the green light is or an action like trading lane is. This is a psychological one. Let them be. If you see someone who's extremely territorial, let it go. Don't feed their ego. Don't challenge them. They might just be having a bad day, but you gotta let it go. There are plenty of strangers on the road. You might not even see half of them ever again in your entire life. It's not worth the risk. It's not worth trying to chase them down. It's not worth trying to cause more trouble. That's the best form of advice I can give to people encountering territorial drivers. As for the actual territorial drivers yourself, if you recognize in this video, 
Hopefully you get better. Hopefully you seek therapy. Hopefully you get the promotion at your job. Whatever is causing your insecurity or fragile mm-hmm. ego, you do need to get solved because you're still human. And I believe that whatever problems you're going through, you shouldn't be imposing on others because we're all humans too. The ninth sign that you're a terrible driver is not following the lines on the road. Now this sounds like a very simple concept, but a lot of idiots mess it up in execution. There are a lot of new traffic innovations like roundabouts and diverging diamonds, both of which I've seen plenty of morons enter the wrong way. And then they're going to post on social media about how roundabouts and diverging diamonds are the plague of the earth and they're massively inconvenient. It is not that hard of a concept. The easiest way to never go the wrong direction on a roundabout or diverging diamond is to just look at the lines on the ground. Go slow. And now the final entry for this video. The fi- just look at the lines. Just follow the lines. I also hate people who don't know how to do roundabouts. Like, we've had roundabouts and diverging diamonds for years now. Yeah. And it's like... But now they're, they're getting closer to... Civilization. Yeah, urban areas. And so now you got a lot of people who are like, this is dumb. This is th-. Right. Remember, I felt the same way, but then it was like... No, this actually makes more sense than the light. It's quicker because uh, when South Korea took, took out their light to put roundabouts in mm-hmm. at City Hall, it's, it's beautiful because I ain't got to waste time on the light. Exactly. Uh, when they redid 75 and got the diversion diamonds at Big B were 14 mile and 12 mile, it's beautiful because it's easy that you don't have to wait. And it's like, it's beautiful. Now, where it gets confusing is when you have set lines on the road but then because it's Michigan, we like to add obstacle courses. So we put the lines on the road with the construction barrels. Oh, yeah. And then the temporary lines that go this way with the barrels going this way. It's just, and it's just, I don't know. I don't want to do it no more. Final sign that you're a bad driver is being a left lane hog. Again, this is like the fifth time I've mentioned this on this channel. Why? Why do you people still do this? So, to reiterate this, the furthest left lane in traffic you do not set the speed for. In most states, it is actually illegal to drive the speed limit in those lanes because you're actually going too slow. So I always see Karens post on social media, I don't get it. What do people expect me to do? Break the law? I'm already going 70 when it says 70. You already are breaking the law, actually. You should be going whatever the flow of traffic. The whole point is to leave the left lane empty. If you just want to pass a few people, you can use it to pass them. That's why it's called the passing lane. But you cannot sit in the left lane. Which is why this is my favorite lane, because I'd be passing everybody. And that's why tons of states are enacting laws that literally say, please do not sit in the left lane or leave the left lane open for faster traffic. Or they'll say the opposite, where they say, slower traffic, keep right. Those are all things you need to understand. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. Or I hope you just had a good laugh. If you're new here and like cars and car... Co- <sighs> yes. But yeah. Favorite lane. I love the left lane. Because I quick, pass everybody. Quick, fast, and easy. As always, Colliders, if you enjoyed this reaction, go ahead and hit the like button. Share with someone who you think would like it as well. If you want to check out Bladed Angel's original video or his channel for yourself, the links to both will be in the description below, along with where you can check out me and Nurse Day W on our own YouTube channels. I have nothing to say, but this was a very good video. Bye, so y'all.